Hello, my name is Sayed Kadam, and this is the Secure Troubleshooting Series, connecting the FMC to Splunk. I'm going to show you how to download the Splunk TA and dashboard app and ingest data directly from the Firepower management device, uh, the Firepower Management Center, to uh, your Splunk uh, setup. Um, this is our app um, in the store, uh, the Cisco Secure eStreamer client. Um, we're currently at version 4.64. Um, so you do need to download the TA as well as the dashboard uh, to complete everything you need for Splunk ingest. Um, the Splunk dashboard does contain a few regular expressions that will normalize your data fields and make sure that the fields coming in are SIM compliant. Uh, so the first thing you want to do once you've downloaded the app is uh, go to Manage Apps, uh, browse to the location, and go ahead and upload that. Um, It'll be a TGZ file. Um, once you've downloaded the TA and installed it, um, go ahead and install the dashboard as well. Um, uh, you can always click on this upgrade um, app, uh, even if it hasn't been installed before, just as a safe way to ensure that you're overriding a previous install. Once that's done, go ahead and restart Splunk. And then we'll go to the command line and show you how to configure and test um, Encore setup. So once that's restarted, uh, the first thing we'll do is we will um, go to the command line. Uh, that will be in Etsy apps, TA eStreamer, bin Encore. And we're going to take a look at this eStreamer.com file. Uh, the eStreamer.com file contains a lot of different values, which I can link to our documentation if you want to get more info on that. Um, but the important things I want to look over really quick um, is this section called Outputters. And this is going to show you where the data from uh, Firepower is going to be saved locally on your heavy forwarder. Um, it's going to be in this directory, data Splunk. And each file is going to be enumerated with this encore.number.log file. So this is the first way to check to make sure that you're getting data is to just inspect that directory and see if you have any log files. Um, so as I go down, um, the next thing I want to check uh, are two things. Um, one is the host name for the Firepower Management Center. Make sure that's pointing to uh, the correct location in your network. Um, and I also want to take a look at worker processes. Um, this will heavily depend on how much volume you are considering ingesting uh, and what type of events you're sending over. If you're sending over connection events, you pretty much want to keep it the same at four worker processes. Um, and depending on the volume, uh, we have a guide that kind of tiers the number of worker processes to the volume that you expect. Um, so if you have a high volume, like maybe five or 6,000 events per second, you'd want to max this out. But if you have a very low volume and you're only sending um, you know, intrusion events or, or malware events, you can actually just pare this down to just one worker process. See? And it is more efficient um, if you do that. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and change that here for this demo, um, put in my FMC IP, and I'll save this. Um, after that, I'm going to make sure that I have my certificate file from the FMC copied over into the directory um, on the TA, uh, the bin Encore directory. Um, and I'm going to make sure that it's also enabled. Um, if this is set to false, which it is by default, um, it, this will not run. So Splunk needs this to be true. Uh, everything looks good, so I'm going to go ahead and save this off and make sure I have my certificate file. Um, certificate file, um, This you may already know this from the FMC training, but it does have to be the same name as the, the endpoint that you're streaming to. So this 198.18.133.206, that is my uh, Splunk box. Um, and I'm going to rename it uh, just to make it a little bit more generic. And I can point to that in my eStreamer.com file, this client.pks file. Um, so I'm going to copy it over. I had a little bit of trouble copying this over. Um, I do want to make sure that it um, is in this Encore directory. Um, and it looks like it is there. Great. Um, I do have an old key file. I'll remove that. Um, and once the certificate is in place, uh, I can run a test. And from there, um, there are two commands that you need to run in order to generate the keys from the certificate. 
Um, I'll run those briefly and then we should be good to go. Um, so as I go through here, if I just put the SPL Encore script, this is the script that pretty much does everything. Um, I'm going to do a test to make sure I can connect to the FMC. Uh, it's prompted me for the password. Go ahead and put in the password that you used for your certificate file. Um, enter that here. Um, and then since there is no key insert files, I'm going, it's going to give you the two commands that you need to copy and paste. Um, so uh, those are right here. Um, it is referencing a Splunk.home uh, variable. So if you haven't set that up already, go ahead and export that. You can just type it in here like I'm doing, or you can set up your batch profile so that you don't have to type it in every time. Uh, that's probably the better way to do it. Um, you also need to set up this LD library path. Um, this is important for Splunk 8.1 and above. Um, uh, so Splunk has, a diff has difficulty finding some of its SSL libraries, and setting this variable will fix that. Um, so once those two are in place, um, and again, you can just type it here as an export, or you can go to your bash profile. Um, once those are in place, then you can run these commands, and it will generate the key insert files that you need to uh, connect to the FMC. So um, now that that's all in place, I'm going to um, copy over uh, the first command, put in my password. That looked like, and if you get this Mac verified okay, that means it worked. Um, if you don't get that, you should retype the command and start over and delete any stray key or cert files. Uh, so that, that looks great. Um, you know, took the password password for both commands. I ran the test command, and it came back with a valid response and a successful connection. So from here, I can run a few different commands. I'm going to go ahead and do the start command. Um, you can also do a foreground, and you can actually see in the console everything that it's doing. Um, you know, it's starting up uh, Splunk, and it's emitting those to the log file um, right here. Using that command, uh, I can see that the service is running, and there's two instances of that. Uh, so that's good. Um, now I'm going to go to the data directory and make sure that data is being written out to the location I specified in my eStreamer comp file. And yeah, it looks like it is. So that's great. Um, I'll take a quick look at that. And yep, here are the events that I'm getting. Um, if I just take a closer look, I see uh, rec type 71. Uh, that is a connection event. So right now I can see um, there's connection events in my raw data um, getting to uh, this directory. And from here, um, Splunk in the inputs.conf has a monitor stanza that is looking at this directory and ingesting it uh, directly into the Splunk um, instance. Um, so I'll just go and verify that. Uh, the inputs.conf, yep, see it's looking at uh, the TAE streamer bin Encore data directory, which we just looked at. Um, it's not disabled, so it should be ingesting it. Um, it's giving it the source type name. That's the default source type we use. Um, you can also, in that stanza, put an index in. And a lot of people do that. We don't do that by default. Um, but if you wanted to send it to an index, that would be the place to, to specify it. Um, now, if I go to do just a generic Splunk search, um, and I look under data types, I can see that I, I do have some data uh, under that source type. So that's another good indicator that um, Splunk is able to pick up the files that we've generated. Um, so we'll do a search really quick for the um, data that we just ingested. Um, gonna narrow it down a little bit um, to the time frame that I'm expecting, the time frame that we saw before. Um, there's one thing that's a little bit tricky. Um, the time is based on what you've set um, in your configuration. So you can ask for you know, data from all time, from zero time, uh, from right now, um, at this point in time, or from a certain, uh, a certain date. Um, so if you do kick off you know, an Encore process and you set zero time, um, it's going to go back into the past, and, and the event time will reflect the the past time, not the current time. So a lot of people, if you're doing the search within the last 24 hours, it may not show up any results um, if you're setting it off uh, to ingest from uh, Genesis time. Um, so that's something to be aware of is the timestamps. 
Um, and actually, I, I can take a look at this bookmark file. This will give me uh, the current time at which um, Encore has processed events. It's kind of like a checkpoint. Um, so if I look at it here, it's saved data up to this point in time from the FMC. Um, so if I just, uh, if you want to take a look at that, it is an epic format. Um, so it's going to be a big, uh, it's going to be a number, uh, an epic number from, uh, you know, Unix zero time. Uh, you can just convert that really quickly and see what, how old, it, how long it's been since you've ingested data into Splunk. Um, and as this process continues to run, um, you can you can see um, exactly how far along it is. And if it gets behind, you can see how far behind it is in time. Um, and you can adjust your eStreamer.com file accordingly. So I had a little bit of trouble here actually looking at that file. Um, I finally got it on this more command. Um, this is uh, this is the timestamp. If I just run this command date, I can see, it. okay, it's Tuesday, May 4th, 2021. Um, we have data up until that point. So I'm gonna re reflect that in my Splunk search just to make sure that uh, the data that Encore is generating is being ingested properly. Um, so if I just change my parameters in Splunk search to reflect that time, I should see some data. And I do, yep, and connection events. I'm not sure if this is the connection event I saw before, um, but this does look good to me. Um, I can look at the raw files and just verify that content I find. Um, and Splunk search does reflect what the raw files are. I'm not missing any data. Um, just really check. So it looks like, yeah, this is Encore is running. It's gotten six more hours worth of data. Uh, so if you see it went from May 4th on the at 12 a.m. to, to 6 a.m. Uh, so it's progressing quite nicely. And yeah, I'm gonna just leave this alone and let it go ahead and generate the data it needs. And uh, I'll look back later and monitor it from time to time. So uh, this is this is the TA. We also have a dashboard app, which we'll showcase in another video. Um, but, you know, for all intents and purposes, if you want to get the data from the FMC, this is all you really need. Um, and you can run a Splunk search on the source type or on the index if you chose to set it up that way. Um, and, you know, from here, uh, you know, we can go and see uh, how this data is represented in the dashboard. Um, I'll go ahead and modify that time really quick. Um, we'll just do a brief query here. I won't go into everything, uh, into a lot of detail. We'll have a separate video for that. Um, so May 4th, and take a look at that, my high-level dashboard. Um, and it looks like I don't have any indications of compromise, but I do have intrusion events. Uh, so we can see the showcased here by category. You have some denial of service attacks, some in uh, privilege escalation attempts, as well as some malware uh, malware events that we're, we're graphing here as well. And this is all specific to that time period that I chose. Um, but if I wanted to refine it further, I could certainly put in an IP address, a subnet range if I wanted to. I could focus in and hone in on the blocked or allowed events um, to see what got through, as well as the directionality, uh, you know, if this was an inbound or outbound type of event. Um, uh, so yeah, this is the dashboard, and we'll go into this a little bit more depth in another video, but I'd like to thank you for your time today. And if you have any questions, please reach out to our um, our mailer, our mailer um, Encore mailing list. Uh, it is uh, directly linked here on the download page. Um, I'll also link it in this video as well. Um, but we monitor that inbox fairly frequently, um, almost every other day. It's not myself looking at it, it's uh, my coworker, um, Doug, looking at it as well. Uh, so, and you know, if you have any issues or feedback, please let us know. And, um, you know, we are at three stars right now. Um, it would be great if we could up that. Um, I wanna, you know, make this, this app work for you. So please give us some feedback, um, what we can do to improve this. And if you're happy with it, um, please give us a good rating. I appreciate that.